the problem is when young people are coming into the world, they don't know what has been before. I mean, they got history lesson, but that's, you know, that that's for whatever it's worth is history. But for people who are actually there today, uh, we don't even talk about it in schools at all. But if anybody brings up the subject, for instance, of uh, what was it like in uh, in the Soviet Union living under communism in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s? What was it like living under Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism? What was it like living then in the Soviet Union and China today? <clears throat> Well, if you go back and listen to the people who are still alive, some of them are still alive today, very old, but they were there and they lived under the regime of communism in the Soviet Union. And when you talk to them, <clears throat> or if you're talking to some very old couples that are still alive who actually were in Berlin under the Nazi regime, Talk to the people who were there. Don't worry about reading a book right now. Talk to the actual guy on the street who lived there under those regimes and tell you what he lived through, how he saw it, and then you begin to get a good idea about what, what uh, life under the Soviet communist system really was, the way it really worked, <clears throat> and the corruption beyond belief that even today all over the world, and Russians in particular, mock and laugh at the government of the Soviet Union because it was so corrupt. <clears throat> and so, uh, but you see, I heard all of this some 60 years ago, and I was very interested, and I started studying, studying the very subject of Marxist philosophy, communist theology, etc., and, uh, well, with that background, I look at the world today, and that's what America is. It's a Soviet communist operation. And the people of America have no idea what those words even mean. Why? Because they've been watching basketball so long, they have been entertained by Hollywood so long, that they really have no idea in the world, unless they talk to some 90-year-old a couple that were around, you know, that were there when the stuff was happening back in the Soviet Union or back in Nazi Germany, talk to the people who were there, eyewitnesses. They didn't read a book and tell you, no, talk to the people who were there. Remember, when you're reading a, a history book, <clears throat> always go to the first page and see who publishes that book, what publishing company publishes that book and then go on the stock market or go to the reference works and see who owns that that, that uh, publishing house that published that uh, that history book which I did I used to do that all the time and so many times I would find that the publisher of these history books that, that glorified the Soviet Union glorified China how wonderful the people's paradise was uh, you know, this was 40 and 50 years ago. I would, I would go and see who owns the publishing company. And it, many times it turned out to be the Rockefeller Brothers Trust Fund who owns the publishing house. Or the J. Paul Getty Company. Or the, uh, or the, uh, or what is it? The Mellon Company. And then you find out the publishing, big publishing houses are owned by People like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, all the international bankers own the publishing houses that publish the books that tell you the BS. And so uh, it didn't take me long, some 60 years ago, to figure out, you know, it's, it's just a business here. The business of bullshitting the world, and Americans in particular. So I started looking at who is publishing these books and what is the real truth? And so I began talking to people uh, who were there in Germany and in Russia and in communist China. And what they would what they would tell me was totally, totally different than what the glorious reports by the uh, Rockefeller Brothers Trust Fund uh, was telling people in schools and teaching them. And what uh, what happened at that time? We're talking about 60, 70 years ago. 
the world communist movement began moving into America through the educational system. And all of this is all documented. It, I mean, most people who are well aware of American history know all of this, but I'm just, I'm just parousing over some of the history that most people are not aware of today.